Okay, uh, thank you, Chair, and thank you, everyone, for being here today. I'll ask the questions and then maybe I can get some answers. Um, I want to ask what measures are being taken to address the fact that some workers are without a PPS number, holding them back from claiming the COVID payment? How many staff have received full payment from MII members while isolating for COVID reasons? How many of MII members' staff receive family income support from the state? Why are staff, as stated by RTE, reluctant to speak publicly about their work conditions and how COVID has impacted on them? In meat factories, air conditioner is very similar. It's very similar to airplanes. Has a report been conducted on this and could this be a factor? Crowded accommodation and communal transport has been key factors in the spread of viruses, the virus in other uh, plants around the world. What measures have been taken on this? Given the large presence of non-national workers in this industry, what communication measures are in place for people who cannot communicate effectively? Is there a translator in every plant? Are warnings written in a number of languages? How many plants are currently undertaking mass testing on a regular basis? I believe today the government are putting regular testing in place, and I think that's important. I believe there's a meeting about that today, and I do want to welcome that. But my belief is, and I firmly believe this, that there needs to be a lot of unexpected inspections in plants. What communications has MII members sent to retailers to reassure continuity of supply for retail buyers and buyers from international countries. In the Farmers' Journal last Saturday, a Carlo farmer stated he believed that product price would drop as a result of plant closures. Can you give a guarantee that farmers won't be hit by these plant closures in order to maintain the profit margin of the meat plants? Recently, we had the restrictions, or some people are saying closures, um, in the leash offerly border. And I understand from the first speakers there's over 100 plants. There's 149 uh, plants in the country. Um, there has been huge confusion about these restrictions in Niche, Offaly and Kildare. And I know, take Carlow, my own area, where a part of Great Cullen is in Leash and part of it is in Carlow. And businesses had to shut down because of the restrictions. And I just think going forward, we all need to work together, first of all, to make sure health and safety is a priority for everyone, but that we cannot be in a position again where businesses are closing, and at the moment, some of them don't even know if they will reopen. So could I actually uh, thank you all and have some answers on this? Thank you. Some I doubt there'll be time for all of the answers, yeah. but yeah. Um, who wishes to go first? Is there, do you want to nominate somebody? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. First, please. Yeah, yeah. Um, Chairman, yes, uh, thank you for those questions, Deputy O'Connell. I'll, I'll answer some of them, and I'll ask my colleague Cormac Keeley to answer other ones. Um, I, I'll start maybe with the, the idea about mass testing, and the question was asked, uh, is mass testing routine in plants? Um, there were, I think, about six plants where there had been large clusters back in April, May, where mass testing occurred. And that process was to test all staff on site, to return only those staff who tested negative into the plant, and to continue in operation subsequently. Uh, at, a, at a later point, the negative uh, uh, testing individuals were also tested. So there would have been a series of a, an, a, a first overall test and then a second test of negative cases. That happened in approximately six sites. Since then, there has been no mass testing protocol. We welcome what has been announced by the government about serial testing. And as I said in my opening statement, what is critical to that is a, an effective track and trace system and a very quick, uh, within 12 to 24 hours response time in terms of uh, testing results. Um, and we need to have clear and unambiguous advanced communication of how these protocols are to operate. You asked about uh, HSA inspections. The answer very clearly, and I said it at the last meeting, was that we welcome and encourage unannounced inspections. And we have absolutely no difficulty with that. Uh, you asked about uh, virus spread in plants and whether uh, systems within plants could uh, accelerate that. Uh, there is a hypothesis to, as to why large clusters of COVID-19 may have occurred in some meat plants and not in others. 
and it's based on two assumptions, one that a super spreading event may have occurred with each, with each, within each of those plants in which large numbers of workers tested positive, or that aerosol transmission of infection or dispersal from the virus of the infected person over distances of more, of more than two metres could occur. We are currently in discussions... By the remaining answers in, in writing, because I have to move on to the next speaker. Again, I'm sorry, but we have a maximum of two hours. I want to get in every... All right. Uh,